take a look at this nice perplexing beach around here. Even though it's kind of a shame until right now that how the fact that the actual weather itself is kind of crappy recently. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree. Other than the fact that we actually got ourselves nice weather coming up until next week or something like that. Hey, what is up ladies and gentlemen? I'm Sonic the Hedgehog here. And I'm Pinkie Pie here. Hey every pony and everyone else out there. And welcome back for some more of yet again for the likes of the Maxi Toys videos. And guess what folks? The Mario Party 4 hosts playable characters has now been fully debuted on this particular board. Well, usually Toad is still a thing with the forms of the host character, but hey, is it, at least it's kind of cool to see uh, Toad, Boo, Shy Guy, Goomba, and Koopa Troopa all in one screen, making like a reference to uh, Mario Party 4 host characters. So, yeah, it's interesting to say the least. So, uh, anyway though, um, yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to more as play of Super Mario Party for the Nintendo Switch. So, uh, the last time we actually did manage to able to play through the, uh, the second board in, uh, Super Mario Party, specifically in Mario Party mode, and that is the honor goes to, uh, King bob Arms Powder Cake Mine. And, uh, today for this episode, especially for the entire weekend, actually, is the fact that we are about to be moving on to the third board, in the Mario Party mode, and that sport is actually called Mega Fruit Paradise, which is usually takes place in a uh, tropical theme beach level, which you know to be expected ever since. In uh, I would say last time we actually had a beach themed level, which is actually based off from um, uh, Mario Party Star Rush for the 3DS, like for instance World One. Yeah, at least as far as I can really try to think about it to ourselves for this point, and um, as you can see. That, uh, the main gimmick about this board is the fact that, actually, I will, uh, mention more on that whenever we get to our turn. Because, if you couldn't tell, we are about to be selecting Shy Guy for this board. Because, well, we figure we might actually go ahead and- Oh, wow, Goomba doesn't move at all. So, anyways, though, the actual main gimmick about this board is the fact that, as to be expected, there are four islands. Does that look familiar to you? Well, it's almost, like, entirely based off, uh, Mario Party 1. Uh, Warriors Battle Canyon, and especially Mario Party 2, Western Land, or no, not Western Land, Mystery Land, I should say, that uh, we're actually going to be going through those different islands. But we'll mention more on details onto that whenever we get to the latest turns, because at the moment, you know, it's just the beginning start. So because of that, um, yeah, we're going to be selecting Shy Guy for this board, and the opponents this time around, though, it's going to be Koopa Troopa, Goomba, and Boo. So not combines all four of those familiar playable characters into one. In addition with how the fact that you know how Toad was still the host of the game, so that makes it a little more accurately the Mario Party 4 host playable characters now. Well, at least as far as I can say about it here. Okay, so Trip Navigator, so we've already played this before, so we don't have to, like, um, practice this or anything, so uh, we'll just have to jump straight to this. Yep, and hope for the best that we can able to once again manage to able to like cut through for those uh, banana peels until we're able to actually decide to continue moving along. So yeah, that's to be expected. So um, yeah, today was actually forms of uh, the 16th of March in 2019. So uh, although we will we'll mention more on that until whenever we get to the point whenever we uh, play this board. Naturally, by the forms of how the fact that today, that uh, the SXSW panel 2019 Sonic the Hedgehog panel will be on it, um, horizon until later on today. So because of that though, I don't know, we were able to actually um, announce more stuff for Sonic the Hedgehog department? Well, at least one particular common thing we we'll like to point things out is of course uh, Team Sonic Racing because, you know, that, um, that game is almost going to be releasing until at some point about two months time. So, uh, yeah, it's getting quite close, kind of thing about it. And plus, I need to be able to definitely to get back into, you know, uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed. And so far from my, uh, you know, from my Let's Play of the forms of uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed so far, even though I'm still currently on the uh, Grand Prix mode, but um, I will eventually try to able to get back into it until it gets to April, until when, uh, you know, Team Sonic Racing comes out. So, and also that um, I've noticed that you're actually going to be uh, gladly coming back on to Shadow the Hedgehog Let's Play, yeah, which is currently... Um, 
I'm, I've actually did manage to done like nine stages so far out of uh, 22 levels so far. Well, at least technically 23 because of that, uh, you know, the last way. But uh, we're not gonna mention more on that until whenever we, uh, until you get back into that game exponentially. Yeah, and I uh, will mention more details about the fact that, um, although, forget what I just said. Alright, so let's go ahead and use the Poison Mushroom at Boo, just because I don't think we can able to let him, uh, get closer to the star or something. Although, I've no idea why we actually use it on Koopa Trooper to begin with, uh, although, apart from the fact that, uh, we actually did manage to land on that specific happening space, because yes, the happening spaces, these particular kinds of spaces do look familiar to you because much like in Mystery Land from Mario Party 2, that uh, we need to able to do a lot of island hopping. So if you're expecting that, if we're able to actually mention more details until later turns and onwards, that uh, this is where the actual board itself, well, out of all the four boards of this game so far, this is actually probably one of my least favorites. Well. Don't get, me, don't get us wrong, is the fact that, well, I don't find this board to be that bad. My only problem with this board, though, is the fact that, well, it matched very much like how it did by the forms of In Warriors Battle Cannon for Mario Party 1, and especially noticeable with Mystery Land for Mario Party 2, that uh, they'd usually just manage to bring back the island hopping system, which I will admit, though, right away, I'm not exactly a huge fan of, uh, you know, by the forms of the island hopping boards layout, but at least it's uh, kind of small in comparison to the forms of, uh, you know, Warriors Battle Cannon, and especially noticeable with, uh, you know, Mystery Land in general, but hey, at least as far as we can able to mention about that, so. So anyway, so, uh, um, yeah, not to mention because uh, later on during today, by the forms of the 16th of March, as I said this before, um, I don't know exactly know what the actual next uh, new Sonic announcements they're going to hopefully try to bring up, but even then, though, that we'll mention more on that later, specifically in the entire weekend of this particular board. So, yeah, that's to be expected for that. So, of course, as you can see right there, we are going to be playing through uh, Science, Steel, and Deliver minigame once again. But this time around, though, we're able to win this because, uh, do you remember that one, uh, during the last weekend, uh, the last weekend, that uh, we did manage to lost the, the lost the minigame because we don't want to let Diddy Kong steal a star? Yeah, as far as I can remember that correctly, though, but hey, that's as far as we can see about this here. And, um, yeah, it's been uh, quite a few days that, you know, since we're actually coming back into this game, obviously, because of, you know, I'm actually currently back on to Shadow of the Hedgehog Let's Play so far, and, um, especially notice about that I've noticed that he's still trying to save up for, uh, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed Let's Play to conclude before, um, you know, Team Sonic Racing comes out for the PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and Xbox One. So, uh, yeah, you probably, uh, noticed by this fact. And, uh, yeah, looks like, uh, Koopa Trooper got himself- Oh, jeez, he got three dash mushrooms due to that, uh, you know, that lucky- You know, that lucky space that, just like any forms of how he does it back in, uh, Womp Storm in the Ruins, that Peach Master got that. I believe it was actually at the very beginning of that particular turn. Well, at least to be more specifically though, Sonic, when he forms of, like, at the very beginning of that particular board. Well, at least we actually did miss, uh, actually lost count about the forms of our progression with the forms of, like, some of these other stuff so far, so... Anyways, so let's go ahead and just use the Shy Guy Dice Block for the whole entire purpose. And, um, I think we should probably go from, uh, let's just go here. Be although, yeah, let's just take that way, because we're not gonna land on that, uh, bad luck space kind of thing about it. Oh, oh yeah, so basically in this particular board also is the fact that we actually come across into this bridge and just like any forms of how it does in, uh, in Pirate Land from Mario Party 2 that uh, we need to able to carefully cross the bridge without even landing on that happening space. Although, we'll mention, we will mention more on that until whenever we are uh, either someone able to land on that particular space. But again, we'll might as well find out until sooner or later. And looks like Boo is keep on losing himself his coins after all that uh, high fives and everything. So, uh, and also we stumbled across this little uh, sand bridge right there. Which, uh, we'll mention more on that until whenever we get to the later portion of this board. So, because, you know, that uh, we slowly are uh, trying to begin with this particular board. So, 
And just like in the previous boards that we've actually did play, we are uh, still once again set this up into 20 turns again. So, uh, hopefully though, it should be a lot more, uh, faster than it attempted to. Oh, of course, we have this mini game again, but, uh, even then, I don't mind about this too much, so... But at least on the plus side, though, we can able to actually just, uh, you know, mess around with computer players and stuff like that for that nature. Although, as far as I've noticed something about this Pinkie Pie, is the fact that the maximum points you can only get up to with, uh, with all seven rounds in total. Mind you, because if you get, like, three points, if you claim first place in every round, that, um, that actually leads us to seven times three makes it up to 21 points maximum. Yeah, because uh, that's the only uh, purpose of this little factor about the actual mathematical equations. But again, we'll, we'll, we'll mention more on that whenever we get to the future modes of this game. So naturally, we could able to show that off until then. Sounds true to me. So, um, another thing I want to explain about this, actually, is the fact that, well, since that uh, we actually get, uh, we actually did manage to get ourselves some new stuff after all. In fact, uh, recently we've actually got ourselves not only my or our new PlayStation 2 game, which we actually did manage to order, but also a brand new DVD that we've actually did manage to pre-order, which is, well, we'll start with the forms of the newest item, but the forms that we actually did pre-order, and that would have to be Ralph Breaks the Internet, which... From the UK's release date, some some form or fashion, or some form or another, that uh, that particular film DVD slash Blu-ray is going to be released at some point in April Fool's Day, which is kind of odd because uh, I believe that uh, it's going to be on Monday's release. So because in every single Monday, though, they always trying to bring up some of these re major releases for uh, you know DVDs for our countries or. Essentially, pretty much across the world. Oh yeah, here's the main gimmick about this particular shopping mechanic as well. Now, naturally speaking, that we still have ourselves two shops, but uh, the biggest differences, on the other hand, though, is the fact that now we need to rely on that thermometer right there. And then, whenever when the thermometer this manages to able to grow, uh, this means it actually represents about the fact that the temperature might start actually increasing. And by the way, there's actually a sand bridge uh, sequence right there, which I believe that it feels kind of similar to how it does it in Mario Party 4 Bowser's Greenly Party with the bridge system, but it actually did manage to get this uh, quite significant uh, differences compared to the forms of how it does it in Bowser's Greenly Party from, uh, you know, in Mario Party 4. But uh, the biggest difference is here is the fact that obviously uh, we'll mention more on that whenever when someone else or some computer players manage to able to get past by the forms of the actual sand bridge for like, I would say for about twice. And by the way, this is what happens if you land on that special event, or in this case a happening space on, you know, angry uh, mega blooper. And this happens. As you can see, that uh, Goomba did manage to fluke off, and guess what? You have to go all the way back to the beginning of the board. Which, you know, is kind of like how we did on uh, Pirate Land from Mario Party 2. On the forms of the actual pirate ship cannons. So, uh, the obvious noticeable difference is, of course, uh, there was only, like, three happening spaces, as opposed to, like, uh, four, if I'm not mistaken. Because even then, it's been a really long time since we're actually going to be playing uh, Mario Party 2 that time. But uh, we might as well be able to count those up exponentially, but even then, uh, we'll, we'll find things out sooner or later. So, I really do like the actual design of this board. I think that's the only good uh, part about this board. But I'm just not a big fan of how the fact that, once again, we are going back into island hopping board uh, scenario. So, looking for love. Ooh, ooh. Hopefully they get some, some love treatment here. Look for a heart. Look at the heart shape. Don't be fooled by other colors or suits. So press any of the four face buttons on the actual like bl uh, black dots, or in this case, by the forms of whatever what buttons you're using, or which Joy-Con you're able to prefer using. No, no way you could able to tell that you could able to find the actual heart. Uh, this mini game is kind of like similar to how it does it in Don't Look mini game from uh, Mario Party 9 slash Mario Party the Top 100, because that minigame was also included on that particular game, but on the 3DS hardware. 
But the only difference is, this time around though, is the fact that we need to look out for hearts, as opposed to look away for those uh, exact arrows they're actually pointing out. So, yeah, uh, this mini game is actually purely tricky, but also it's very intense at the same time, because naturally, if you really want to go for a higher score as possible, then you should probably be able to actually get a good chance you can able to do a fast reflexes until you're able to actually get your points count. So, I'm pretty sure the highest amount of points you can get, you can get up to in this mini game was actually 50, because I believe there was only like 10 quick rounds. So yeah, that that way it can make it a little bit more obvious. Because uh, again, if you're in first place, then you get five points, and then when it's like 10 rounds later, then you weren't able to realize that the maximum amount of points you can get up to it was definitely buddy forms of 50. Yeah, which is probably true. So yeah, um. That's as far as we can go at this point, well, apart from the fact that we actually did manage to pre-order Ralph Breaks the Internet from uh, the DVD version, most likely, because of how the fact that, well, we did manage to already saw that on the big screen whenever when that film first came out. Yeah, which is definitely true, and I actually really enjoyed that film, basically. Even though it wasn't as nearly as perfect as uh, the first film, I will admit though right away, but it's so great as it is, even then, though, that, uh, well, you can definitely tell by this point for that point, so, uh, because, you know, most of these sequels don't nearly match up the perfect standpoint compared to the first or original films. Yeah, which is probably understandable for most films nowadays, because either way, that, uh, sometimes that, uh, character development might change up a little, or in this case in scenarios, the how the fact that most of the stories didn't, it didn't seem to able to connect. But either way though, sometimes that sequels can't be perfect or, or most of the time, like, for instance, for example, by the forms of like, uh, I would say Cars 2, because Cars 2 doesn't do that, doesn't do that good. Yeah, no, because that film is terrible compared to the forms of the first film, but at least we give Cars 3 some credit, they did manage able to bring back, you know, Lightning McQueen as far as the actual storyline goes. So, yeah, you probably get the idea for that point right there. And also because, oh yeah, for that uh, second drop right there, that uh, you know how the flatter did manage to able to hold up most of, most of her items there. Uh, what happens is, is the fact that whenever when that thermometer gets all the way full up, full up, until when it gets to that red line on the top, because as you can see, from behind, there's actually that giant scoop of ice cream. But uh, what that do exactly? Well, we'll never know until whenever we're able to approach to that. Or in this case scenarios for that specific point, the computer player, the computer players, sorry, the most are able to get closer to that. So I wonder what that next door is going to be at. Oh yes. Oh, what is it? Oh, cool, top notch. Yep. So it looks like the next door space is going to be at the watermelon aisle. So yeah, pretty top notch. I gotta tell you. Yeah, which is good because I'm pursuing this is the word that this is the where the star spaces go near to us. So anyway, I think this is the point where yep, the stone bridge has collapsed. So yeah, basically that uh if you manage to let the sand bridge able to break apart, even collapse a bit, or in this case just collapse in general, uh what happens is is the fact that you do fall off and you lose coins for some reason, because I've no idea why that the, the, please don't tell me that the water can be very uh, dangerous or what have you. Although, to be expected, unlike lava, that is actually very dangerous. Oh, we're playing this minigame again. I'm actually quite surprised about this. Yeah, no, because I'm presuming they weren't able to pick this minigame at all times because that's one of most people's uh, favorites. Yeah, I would have imagined about that. So, uh, yeah, with that uh, sand bridge, uh, what happens is the, is the fact that they actually did manage to break apart. And uh, you can't even go back into the other islands that easier. So now we have to rely on island hopping now. So because of that, well, this is potentially one of my least favorite part about this board sometimes. Because either way, although aesthetically speaking, it's not that bad. Even because of how the fact that, well, it does retain uh, two basic islands and two islands represented from fruits. Which there are, I would say, pineapple and as we mentioned earlier, the watermelon. But as apart from that though, I'm just not a big fan of the island hopping system ever since in, uh, you know, Mystery Land, and especially noticeable with, uh, you know, Warriors Battle Cannon. But, on the other hand though, at least I'll take, uh, Mario Party 2 Mystery Land some credit. They did manage to offer you to pay, um, I would say 10 coins, wasn't it? 
to able to actually just go ahead and just, you know, uh, go to the other island on a diagonal method right there. So maybe this is not totally luck based, but on a few line but on a few islands it is. Well, at least the only two, uh, the only exception you can able to make the uh, island hopping uh, super easy and fast is obviously that bridge is still looks perfectly intact on uh, the other side. And then basically the only thing you need to watch out for is of course the uh, the happening space, and that's really about it. So uh, yeah, that's as far as I can say about this board. Honestly, it's just that well, you know, can you see what this is going? It's basically it's just. Warriors Battle Cannon, and especially with Mystery Land, but this time around though, it's in Super Mario Party, uh, you know, uh, MT Cube developer this time, so naturally this makes it a little bit more of a, almost a, like a matchup. But, on the other hand though, unlike the ones of how it does it in that, uh, you remember in the, uh, Grand Canal board in Mario Party 7, in, uh, the Bowser Time events, that, I mean, that one time that Bowser did manage to able to transform those bridges into a Bowser bridge. Meaning, about the fact that you have to come across into not three, not six, but nine, uh, Bowser spaces between these three bridges separately. And, uh, usually it's managed to able to restore back into its normal for about three turns later. On the other hand, though, with this particular board, that, uh, in your forms of, like, the Sand Bridge, for instance, uh, However though, when it gets to like 3 turns or later, it does not restore it completely, so you have to rely on the island hopping at all times. Yeah, which is kind of a shame, especially if you really want to, desperately want to land onto that. Uh, depends on what colored pipes you want to land on, like, um, I'm assuming if you manage to go through the green pipe or the red pipe, it actually takes you to the diagonal tra uh, traversing for the pipe into a different island. Yeah, because if you couldn't tell by the forms of the actual full map of, uh, you know, Mega Fruit's Paradise, that, uh, if you go, um, you know, a little bit back up a little, and then basically it, it can able to tell you where the pipes are actually going to lead you to. So you can then know, because if you can tell, they're going to be on the diagonal movement. So, oh wow, really? Wow. We're actually going to be lucky at this point right there. <laughs> Gee, I wonder why that uh, Toadette really wants to able to, you know, stuck around with the forms of that watermelon section right there. And of course, we got ourselves the uh, the versus mini game Rumble mini game right there. But this time it's Rumble Wave, and uh, basically we have to oh we have to bet for like 15 coins there. So oh well, whatever. Anyway, so so in this particular mini game is the fact you have to press the uh, the button on the right. Whoever thinks they remember their strongest Rumble. And then, yeah, it did usually vibrate my gloves a little. And I think we've got this, because I'm pretty sure the other three did manage to get this a little bit too late, or, yeah, it's potentially too late. So yeah, that makes the entire part done. And as usual, it just transformed back into the forms of blue space after all, so, uh, meaning about the fact that we've no longer come across into that whatsoever, so... I'm quite surprised we haven't exactly come across into those uh, versus Rumble mini games like for almost all the time. Yeah, I know because it's only for about shorter amount of time. Yeah, I know that. Anyways, though, so we have the next mini game right there, and it looks like that we once again gonna be playing a full player game. But uh, oh, looks like we have Don't Wake Wiggler again. So because I think last time we've played this was actually on the final turn. In uh, King Bob Arms Powder Cake Mine. Yeah, but this time around though, we have, you know, different characters and stuff like that, so. I wonder who's gonna be first this time. Of course, we'll pick first. Start. So we have to be very, be very cautious for this point, because, again, if you accidentally wake uh, Wigglow up, uh, not only do you able to actually, like, let, let the minigame finished already, but because you're able to actually going to be losing all of your points significantly. So, yeah, just be very cautious with that. So anyways though, another thing I want to explain about this actually, while this is going, that uh, we did manage to put, uh, you know, order ourselves our... Uh, I would say, the, my, to my knowledge, that uh, this will definitely be my definition of the final PlayStation 2 game I was going to be able to add to our collection, and that will have to be Spyro uh, Hero's Tale. Which meaning about the fact that we actually got ourselves our next installment of the Spyro the Dragon series, specifically the classic ones. 
Yeah, because we, after all, we've actually, uh, got ourselves the original trilogy on the PlayStation, and, uh, especially noticeable with, uh, uh, the terrible entry, which is Enter the Dragonfly, and, uh, especially noticeable- Oh, Boo got screwed over right there! Yeah, I can definitely tell for that specific, uh, you know, situation there. And, uh, yeah, that's as far as we can able to see that right there. In fact, uh, before you mention about the forms of, uh, Sparrow, uh, Sparrow A Hero's Tale that we've got, specifically on the PlayStation 2, that, um, as you can tell, from the actual winning animation for Shy Guy, especially with Koopa Trooper later on, that, uh, well, we've already seen, uh, did we able to actually team up with Koopa Trooper for earlier ago? Or maybe we haven't come across into that yet. But, uh, yeah, mostly because of how the fact that most of the animations from Mario Party 9 for, uh, both Shy Guy and Koopa, like, both of those winning animations are pretty much exactly, you know, pretty much exactly the same animation as the ones how it does it from Murray Party 9. Yeah, which is true, because either way, because again, uh, this game has been developed by ND Cube, but I think this is actually the sixth time, like, making a Mario Party game on the ND Cube developer. I have no idea why they haven't brought up any forms of another sequel to, like, Wii Party, for instance. Although, mind you, we've already got, uh, two Wii Party installments, which there are, obviously, the ones in 2010. And we got a sequel, which is Wii Party U, came out in 2013. And, uh, that's about it. I'm guessing because they actually get themselves a little bit more popular these days. Especially because of how the fact that, oh, looks like that Goomba is trying to ignore the actual happening space at this point now. So yeah, as you can see that throughout the list, boys, that we now got ourselves the third and the final uh, new playable character joins into this particular point of this uh, Let's Play, and that is, of course, Goomba. Which, to me, is actually a pretty weird choice, but also pretty exciting at the same time, because, uh, yeah, this is actually the first time that Goomba, he's going to be doing something, like, outside of the forms of the baseball titles, which, again, which is essentially, uh, Superstar Baseball and Super Sluggers, which technically Goomba was a playable character on those two games, pretty much. Well, at least as far as I'm reckoning. But, uh, the first time around in a Mario Party series, that he's now become a fully playable character. So, yeah, this is interesting. And, uh, all he needs now is just basically we need him as a playable character in, uh, either Mario Kart or, um... I will classify for saying Smash Brothers, but uh, at the moment right now, that um, the actual DLC uh, development is most likely focusing on Joker for now, on uh, until when it gets to like next month or something. Yeah, which is probably true for that little understandable moment. So um, another thing I should probably explain about this actually is the fact that um, for those of you probably wondering about the actual Let's Play schedules at this point, originally I was trying to able to- oh wow, we got even very lucky right there. Although, it all depends if uh, Boom managed to able to- oh, he uses his uh, hidden block card. Yeah, from, um, you know, for a potential purpose there. And once again, he's going for coins, and this time around though, he's got, you know, lesser amounts. Although, kind of thing about it though, I'm pretty sure that, uh, Koopa Trooper gets the hidden block first. And sadly for him, he actually didn't get himself a chance to able to get that star space. Yeah, kind of a shame for him, but, um, all he has to do now is basically he needs to go all around the island, and just, yet you need to keep on doing, like, an island hopping system, which, again, some people seem to turn off a little bit. But, uh, either way though, let's move on to the next minigame. We have Barreling, or Barreling, along. Alright, so, race to the finish line, tilt the Joy-Con forward to speed up. Moving through tall grass and puddles will slow you down. So, basically, you have to, like, uh, move your Joy-Con left or right, forward and backwards, whatever what directions you're going for, until you're able to tilt your, um, barrel. So, yeah, that's as far as we can say how this goes. Alright, so our minigame new record for this one is uh, 25 seconds and 47 milliseconds. Hopefully we'll try our best if we're able to actually just try to do this kind of stuff, so... Looks like Koopa's having a hard time right there. Yeah, I know that. So, some people seem to think that this is probably one of the weakest minigames in the entire collection so far. Well, as far as I've noticed, it's because the how the fact that the speed itself is really, really ridiculously slow, 
Well, aside from those boost paths, they're able to actually speed you, uh, speed things up a, a notch. And um, also, same applies by the forms of how the fact that the actual physics in this mini game can get pretty wishy-washy sometimes. And we got new records, which we still have 25 seconds, but this time we have 25 milliseconds. Yeah, which is pretty uh, much a you know the improvement over the likes of the actual previous attempts on this mini game. Well, we generally play this in our own time for. Um, well, whenever when we first got the game back in, like, October 2018, so... Well, at least only for about six days, uh, later, as far as I've usually noticed by this, so... Because, you know, this game was usually came out in the 5th of October in 2018, so... Yeah, it seems more accurately, though, there was only two Mario Party games that has been released since, you know, in October for about, like, twice in a row. Like, one in, uh, Star Rush so far in Europe, and, uh, especially noticeable recently for Super Mario Party. I mean, what's next? Super Mario Party 2? Or, in this case, Super Mario Party DLC? I don't really know, because... At the moment, it feels kind of stingy sometimes about the fact that NT-Cube doesn't seem to able to tell us when the DLC is going to be either revealed yet, or probably not, or probably they're going to be moving on to the next installment. Or perhaps maybe because we'll mention more on that until... Uh, whenever we get to the very end of this let's play because you know You know, we're still focusing on one mode see but then no, we can't be uh, bothered to able to like spoil things for a little bit So uh, anyway, so it looks like Goomba got himself his first ally, which is well Bowser jr Which ironically, this is the character we actually select last time from the previous board Yeah, kind of funny actually Oh yeah, this is the part right there, that um, you actually have a choice between uh, two presents, which either this could be either be go like either one or like uh, two 50% chances between the two presents. And uh, basically, it depends on what uh, NPCs you'll be getting, either the uh, the Lakitu or Paratrooper or the worst defender of the bunch is Piranha Plants. And, uh, Basically, but again, you only have like 50% chance of each two presents, so it doesn't matter which one you're gonna go for. But uh, if you get screwed over by the piranha plants, you're obviously gonna lose some coins, so you so have to stay sharp on that one. Yeah, but even then, though, let's go and get ourselves our next die, shall we? Yeah.